Hello, hello, beloveds, and welcome, welcome, welcome. I am so grateful to tune in and turn on with you. Feeling so good, feeling so connected and grounded. You can definitely feel the energy shifts and planetary shifts and all kinds of shifts now that we are here in December. So blessings, beloveds. Thank you so much for tuning in. So I just shared a post about self-love. And, you know, many of us see it as a one-time experience. And, you know, self-love has to be a daily practice. And you know what? It's truly self-love that allows us to tap into our intuition. Because when you are in tune with yourself, that is when you can hear yourself. You can't hear yourself when you're confused. You can't hear yourself when you're in chaos. And so it is so important that you allow yourself to calm down so you can tune in. And how you calm down is doing things that you love for yourself. So like right now, you know, I lived in Europe for many, many years, and so I developed this habit of an afternoon coffee. And so for me, it is so self-loving and soothing to have an afternoon coffee, even though, you know, I mean, I don't know. I guess I just, I just got used to it. And then for a long time, I said, no, no, caffeine is bad for you. And I made up all these things, but I so enjoy a little afternoon coffee and a sweet. It's one of my favorite things. And it's one of the ways that I take a minute to calm down in the middle of the day between clients, um, to just be with myself for like 10, 15 minutes to just sit. No phone. Sometimes me and Guillermo have some great conversations. Sometimes he joins me. Sometimes I do it on my own. But I treat myself like I'm at the cafe, you know. I do the whipped cream. I get my napkin and my coffee. And I remind myself it is the little things that I do for myself that allows me to connect to deeper parts of myself and this is why it's so important that we know ourselves because we think we know ourselves and in truth what we know is preferences and what preferences are are these outer experience of how we think people should be and we have to recognize that our preferences you know are are never going to align with another person's it's just not going to happen because we are all separate beings. And so our preferences are really personal things, right? And so we have to get beyond our preferences because preferences is really kind of like our, um, our most childlike um, experience. I like this. I don't like this, right? So early, at an early age, you determine, yeah, I like vanilla. I don't like chocolate. And so for years, you don't try chocolate because something in your mind or you had a bad experience with chocolate one time, and so you've told yourself this story that I no longer like chocolate, but is that true? No, you had one experience where chocolate didn't make you feel good, and so then you made up a story that chocolate was not good for you. And so that's what we do to ourselves. We keep ourselves from things without trying it again, and we have to remember a part of resiliency, a part of you know, connecting to our intuition is being determined and devoted and dedicated. It is a practice. You don't just get to say, I want what I want. Give it to me now, please. You know, we, you have to have a connection to spirit. And this is why it is so important that people know themselves. See, I'm glad you just had a paradigm shift. That's amazing. Because we have to know ourselves, you know, and when we don't know ourselves, again, we're basing it off of what other people might tell us about ourselves, right? Like, yeah, you never like chocolate ice cream. Don't eat it. And then you're like, but why? Why don't I like chocolate ice cream? I never tried it, right? You know, we think that commitment means, right, thank you. We think commitment means... Um, there's an end. No commitment is an ongoing thing. You have to forgive and get up and fall down and get up and fall down and get up. That's why forgiveness is an everyday practice because we are never always there. We are human beings. 
And then we are light beings. And when we're light beings, we know. And when we're in our dark being self, we know. And so how do we come into balance? How do we come into harmony? You know, and every single month we go, seems like we go through these phases, right? We go through these phases where we feel great. And then, you know, like here, here we are at the beginning of the month. We know at the end of this month is going to be a new era, a new era, a, a new time. And so what are we focusing on? What are we giving to ourselves? Are we listening to our intuition or are we listening to the static and the noise that's going on outside? Because if we're listening to the, out, to the static, then we're not listening to what our heart is telling us, what our intuition is guiding to us into the new year. And so this is why I love every year I have the um, predictions and prophecies it's one of my favorite things to do and share with you ancestral wisdom and guidance. But um, that as well as the connection with the moon, just like the moon, we have phases. You know, yesterday I shared some insight about how our ancestors followed the moon with everything. You know, daylight savings time is based on the sun, on the sun the way the sun shifts, and this is the ancient practice. However, we don't have these big farms. Here in Mexico, yeah, they still have big farms. that We live right next to one. However, in the United States, in places like, like that, there is not this big farming industry that it used to be. So our ancestors used to follow very strong moon and sun energy. We know the Mayans, we know the, you know, the Egyptians, we know every ancient civilization, except for us, who we see as the most intelligent beings, yet we know that is not true because we think technology makes us smart. However, no one has still figured out how they built those damn pyramids, right? But they followed the sun and the moon. We have gotten so disconnected from ourselves and our power that we don't even know the power of the moon, the power of Jupiter, the power of our sun sign and what this all means. And so, you know, it's more than just reading your horoscope. It's more than just, oh, let me pick some tarot cards. This is truly knowing yourself. And this is what, you know, the mystery schools, the initiates, what some of our ancestors were going through at the same time as these outside influences of real war coming your way, your village being attacked, animals from somewhere coming in. You know, they, these were some real threats. And yet they still harnessed the spiritual gift. And so we have to allow ourselves to harness the spiritual gift. And this is where we fall off because we are lazy, because we are comfortable. And so 2021 is going to remind us that we can't be free and comfortable. We have to decide which one we're going to be. So... I invite you, first of all, to come to the predictions and prophecies, and I have to figure out um, the best way to do that because it was a part of something. Uh-oh, my screen got dark there. Um, and see if there's a sign-up. But please sign up for the Tarot and the Moon. That will be coming up on 12-12. And then the prophecies and prediction, predictions and prophecies is on the 14th. And um, then we've got the Winter Solstice coming up. I mean, there is so much energy in this time period, as well as a new year, a new, you know, a new beginning. So this is the time of the deep cleanse. So I've got some really great things coming up. So please sign up. Links in bio. Join the Tarot in the Moon that's coming up on 12-12. We're going to have a magical day. And just ask yourself, what are you doing every day, every single day for your self-love? What are you doing to bring in your power? What are you doing to experiment beyond the chocolate ice cream, you know, to experiment beyond what you think you like and really looking at yourself deeper. And this is why I love tarot so much because it really allows you to look deeper at yourself. And so thank you so much, beloved. 
And so just give yourself some time. Give yourself 10 minutes. Have a coffee. Have, you know, a dance session with yourself. Give yourself some you time today and ask yourself, what, what do I really want? Who am I, you know, being? And if you've been keeping yourself from the good stuff, ask yourself why. Because personal freedom, that's the numerology for 2021. And so Miana Melendez just joined my amazing daughter. Thank you, beloved. I was just sharing some of the things and I was saying, I forgot about um, something with the predictions and prophecies. And so I just want to have everybody join us on um, 12 12 for our tarot and the moon. So keep up with these vibes. Keep asking yourself these questions. Go in, go deep, listen, breathe, pause, and get ready, beloveds. We've got something great coming up. So this month is all about cleansing and clearing away because freedom is on the way beloved freedom is on its way what are you bringing in so i'll be sharing some more insight and information with you very very soon I've got some good stuff coming i'm feeling the energy this lunar eclipse has been amazing energy wise for me so let's just take a moment to just thank the angels and the ancestors just thank us for for getting here we've all lost somebody or heard of somebody who's been lost this year and yet we are still here we are still surviving and so we just bless every man woman and child we bless every tree and every sea every animal every insect we bless every spirit that takes its first breath every spirit that takes its last for this and so much more we are grateful Grateful to be grateful to be grateful to be grateful. And I let it be. Ashe, amen. Blessed be. And so it is. Thank you so much, beloveds, for joining. And keep asking yourself the deeper questions. I've got some more coming your way. And until next time, peace and blessings.